Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's have a conceptual look at Green's theorem. The equation tells us that the line integral defined by p dx plus q dy over some integral and of uh, some line integral or some path that of course needs to be a complete circular path or doesn't have to be circular but a complete loop so you start and end at the same place that will be equal to the integral of the partial of the y component of the vector field respect x minus the partial of the x component of the vector field respect to y times dA. With other words, it is equal to the integral of this quantity times dA over the region enclosed by that complete path. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at this portion of Green's theorem. So we're going to put that here, and in the previous video we kind of had a graphical look at what these two represented. So really what this represents, this portion of the Green's theorem represents, it represents how much the magnitude of the vector field, and I need a D in here, the vector field increases or decreases with increasing x and y distance from the origin. So as you go in the x direction away from the origin or the y direction away from the origin, how much does the magnitude change? And of course, that's defined by the change of the q component. In other words, this is the y component of the vector field. How much of the y component of the vector field changes as you change in the x direction? How much does the x component of the vector field change as you're changing in the y direction, moving in the y direction? Now, three things can happen when you evaluate this. The first thing that can happen is that the difference between these two quantities is a constant other than zero. Let's call it k. Now, going back to this definition right here, we can define the work done of moving through a vector field along a particular path. So, if you move in a vector field, and that vector field represents a force, you can then calculate the work done moving through that vector field. And if this quantity of the Green's theorem is equal to a constant, then the work done can be found by taking that constant, which is the difference between these two quantities, and multiplying it times the integral of the dA within that region bound by your line integral. In other words, it's the constant times the area enclosed by that line integral. If the value of this is not a constant, if it's some function of x and y, then the work done has to be found by doing the actual integral of this quantity, which becomes a function of x and y, times dA. And if these two components are equal to each other, if the change of the y component of the vector field with respect to x is equal to the change of the x component of the vector field with respect to y, they're equal to each other, then we can say the work done equals zero because one minus the other equals zero. And then moving in a complete path along that vector field, integrating over that line integral, we end up with work done equals to zero. So that's the conceptual look of what a line integral is and what the equivalent equation of the Green's theorem is and what these particular things actually mean from a conceptual perspective. So the easy part is that if they're equal, the integral is zero. If they're not equal but they're a constant, then it's simply equal to the constant times the area enclosed by the path of integration. And if they're not equal, then of course you truly use Green's theorem and you integrate this portion on the right side, which in most cases is still going to be a lot easier than doing the line integral itself and calculating the work done by evaluating this component right here. And that's how it's done.